In the early 20th century, scientists recorded mysterious new particles bombarding the Earth from outer space. They had discovered cosmic rays, and they rushed to study them. By the late 1930s, they came to the conclusion that the experimental results could not be explained using the then known fundamental particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. Some other, more mysterious particles were responsible. Using cosmic rays to detect new particles isn't particularly efficient, however, because you never know when or where they're going to turn up. It would make much more sense to make your own. Thus entered into physics this, the particle accelerator, a way of making cosmic rays in the laboratory. Particle accelerators built in the 1940s and 50s led to the discovery of many new particles, given exotic names like pions, sigmas, lambdas and deltas. By the mid-1960s, over 80 apparently fundamental particles had been discovered. So many, in fact, that particle physicists began to refer to them as a zoo. This was no better than Mendeleev's periodic table. Eventually, order and elegance were restored by American physicist Murray Gelman. There was a comparatively simple underlying structure to all this. And the classification, say, of the strongly interacting particles depended a great deal on symmetries and broken, in particular, broken symmetries approximate symmetries that were violated. Gelman had noticed patterns which physicists can explain in terms of symmetries and by identifying the underlying symmetries he found he could explain the properties of the particles. According to him protons, neutrons and the whole zoo of apparently fundamental particles were made up of just three types of basic building blocks which he named quarks. Just the simple inspection of the uh, particle chart would suggest immediately the quark scheme. So the difficult thing was not noticing the quark scheme. That was essentially trivial. What was difficult was believing that it had any relevance. It wasn't until 1968 that the biggest scientific instrument of its time would help turn theory into fact. Well, it turned out that uh, friends of mine at the uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator Center were doing an experiment, not intending it, as far as I know, to be a test of the quark idea. They used the electron beam to uh, take a, an electron micrograph of the proton. And crudely speaking, they found that it was made of three objects with the correct charges. So it was taken as a confirmation that the uh, quark idea was correct. The particle accelerators of the last half century have uncovered a family of subatomic particles with no discernible internal structure, or at least none that we can see today. The fundamental particles can be arranged into a table, a bit like Mendeleev's. But whereas there are around a hundred chemical elements, there are only twelve fundamental particles arranged into three families. And in fact, you only need four, the up and the down quark that make up protons and neutrons, the electron and the electron neutrino, to describe everything in the world around us. The other two families are identical in every way to the first except that they're heavier. And why they're there, nobody knows. But we hope that there may be an even simpler picture. And to find out, we're going to recreate the conditions that were present at the start of the universe, less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. How do we recreate those extreme conditions here on Earth? Well, you need one of these, the Large Hadron Collider. 27 kilometers in circumference and filled with over 2,000 superconducting magnets, each at 1.9 Kelvin. That means that they're colder than the space between the stars. Inside here, we accelerate protons to 99.999999% the speed of light before bringing them into collision inside four giant detectors. 
And those detectors take pictures of the collisions 600 million times a second. These are the lengths we have to go to to discover the fundamental building blocks of the universe. And who knows, the next stage in our journey may reveal that our current picture is wrong. The universe may be simpler or very much stranger than we ever imagined. In the next program we look at the forces of nature, the agents of change in the universe.